Hello everyone, welcome back. So in this video, we'll be discussing about the concepts of uh, process creation and termination. So we will be dealing with um, the concept of process creation as well as termination. So basically, there is a data structure which is usually maintained in the system, which is called the process table. Now, what this process table uh, will include is uh, so this is usually a table so this will have details of uh, every process so whenever a process is like created uh, the process will be an entry will be added into this process table now there should be some identifier to identify that uh, new process so this identifier which will identify a process is basically called the uh, process identifier so uh, every process will be identified by this process identifier we usually um, like term it PID so process identifier this process identifier is a unique value and uh, it is of the type integer so every process which gets created will have an entry in this process table and will be identified using this PID so we'll have like PIDs here mentioned and uh, if you want to uh, like get the data for a particular process we refer uh, this table using that PID and get its data so this is uh, the process table which is maintained now uh, process creation basically it is actually done using um, uh, so the whatever main process we have which basically creates a process so there should be some process which will create another process so there would be a main process which will create a new process uh, the usual terms which we use is like uh, the main process which creates the process is called the parent process and the one which gets created is usually called the child process so there is this parent child terminology which is uh, usually used so parent is the one which creates and uh, child is the process which actually gets created now let's say uh, there was a parent process which created a child process now usually this child process would need some kind of resources to do its tasks so it would uh, basically need some resources now there are uh, two ways in which uh, the child process can get these resources one it can directly ask the like OS so it can directly get these uh, from the OS or uh, the second way is basically it, it can be restricted uh, to get the so resources from the parent so whatever parent has uh, this child uh, may be able to just uh, inherit from the parent so it can be uh, restricted to inherit the resources from the parent so there are two ways now if the process if the child process directly in, uh, like uses the uh, resources from the OS then it would uh, it would not have any restrictions and it may end up uh, taking more number of resources so it's uh, it's usually a good idea to uh, make sure we restrict the child process to use uh, resources from the parent so again uh, parent if if it inherits the resources from the parent then again it has uh, two choices one the parent may basically share its resources with the child or it can partition its resources among the children in both the ways uh, the child is like again restricted uh, to the amount of resources it can use but here it's like uh, there's no restriction it can use any amount of resources basically now let's say a parent created a child so both the processes are there so we have parent and the child now there are again two possibilities uh, which can happen like of execution so there are two basic possibilities one both parent and child will run uh, concurrently this is one uh, possibility or the second possibility is that the parent will wait till the child execute till the child executes basically so in the first I mean both of these are possible so we'll, we'll dig deeper into this uh, in a while like okay so we'll, we'll basically discuss this using uh, Unix systems so in Unix type of systems, the creation of a child is basically done by this fork uh, function. So if a parent wants to create a child process, what the parent will do is basically it will call this fork function. So fork will uh, spawn a child. Now we'll have to discuss about the fork operation. So what will happen when a parent calls this fork function? So let's say there was some main function and um, in this main function we go ahead and call this fork so what happens so when whenever this fork is called 
usually uh, there would be another child process created and uh, let's say there were some lines of code here there was line 1 there was line 2 assuming so whenever fork is called so from the point where the fork is called uh, till the end of the function so we have line 1 and line 2 so this is this would be our child process the new process this would, this is our parent process now whenever this parent process is executing and there was a call to fork so there would be a new process created the child and both these processes the parent and the child process will have the same code uh, present so it will be like a duplicate uh, process which gets created whenever fork is called so one thing to note with fork is that it usually calls a duplicate uh, process Uh, when we say duplicate process here the program part which is this part and also the data part both of these are actually copied to the child so these will be copied so this is how a uh, fork usually works it basically uh, kind of like creates a duplicate process from the main process so once the fork is called now both of these would be in execution both the parent and the child so they will continue their execution from the next line after fork now let's say a parent has created a child using the fork method and uh, in both the cases line 1 is the next line which gets uh, executed so it depends on uh, the os so it, it actually depends on the os which process would run next so once a fork is called both are uh, actually uh, both can run concurrently now so parent might run first or child might run first it depends on the system actually now just to give an example how this would work let's have um, a main function so here let's say we call fork and um, let's say we'll print we'll print something so what happens here is once this fork is called this would be our parent so as soon as this fork is called there would be one more uh, child process created and it would have this line to execute so print something so now what would happen basically is the parent might run first or the child might run first so assuming parent runs first it will print something and uh, then once the parent is done next child will run it will also print something so once the fork up like fork fork call is made you would see print uh, like something get printed twice so this is how like a fork could basically work it will create a duplicate process now we uh, we would not want uh, to like have two processes running the same code so uh, usually once a new process is created like the child process uh, our basic idea would be to have this child process run a different uh, kind of process basically not the same duplicate process so in order to have that uh, there is one more system call called uh, exec so as soon as fork is called in the child or the parent we will basically call this exec uh, system call so since uh, after fork is called both parent and child will have the same uh, duplicate code running uh, in either of these two uh, codes we would uh, have this exec function call uh, mentioned now how to identify which one is uh, parent and which one is child once the two duplicate processes are created so that is uh, where the return type of this function uh, comes into picture so this would return something like this whatever uh, it returns is basically an integer so fork it can return three types of values uh, one it can return a negative value or it can return zero or it will return some positive value now let's say uh, i'll create a, a variable called pid and we'll call fork if if at all uh, this pid value comes out to be negative assuming so this means this fork operation was unsuccessful so this means uh, whatever child we wanted to create so this child uh, process it wasn't uh, created so this means uh, there was like the child process uh, we weren't able to create so fork failed here basically and assuming um, this pid value comes out to be zero so if return type of fork is zero that means we are basically running the child process so we are currently uh, running the child 
and if it is uh, some positive value which is returned that means it is the parent process which is running and whatever positive value that gets returned that is basically your um, process id of the child process which got created so there are three values which can get uh, returned one negative this is uh, unsuccessful for cooperation if it returns zero that means we are currently running the child and if it is positive it means we are running the parent now let's say fork was called you want to uh, see which which function is running first so what we can do is so we'll consider this uh, same uh, function let me take a different yeah so so we had this main function and we wh what we did was we basically called this uh, fork so let's say we called fork and we'll see if this is zero that means it is child let's go ahead and print uh, child so this means child got executed if it is let's say some greater value greater than zero this means uh, the parent is running so if we go ahead and do this if we go ahead and run this uh, particular function what would happen is first fork gets created so as soon as fork gets created there will be a duplicate process created and it would have this part basically now we'll have this pid value so assuming pid value came to be zero so if it comes to be zero then we'll go ahead and print child so in the output you would basically see child printing so once the child is done it will return the control back to parent and parent will run and then uh, parent gets printed but if the pid value comes out to be a greater value greater than zero then you'll see parent getting printed first and then child getting printed so both of these outputs are possible basically now uh, we usually don't want uh, like the same code to be running so we have this exec function call which comes to play here so what we will do is let's say we wanted the child process whatever we created to run a different uh, function not the same uh, exact code so what we'll do in the child process so here basically if pid is zero instead of printing we will go and uh, call this exec function now exec will take two arguments basically so the first argument is usually uh, the file you want to run the new program and the second argument will be the arguments that you can give to this uh, program so once you call this exec instead of uh, like we were doing some simple printing here if we call exec then it will basically call this program instead of having this program in the child process so that is a way in which we can basically run two different type of processes in the uh, i mean simultaneously concurrently both will be running now there are different families of uh, exec functions like we'll have uh, exec v we'll have something called exec vp exec lp i mean all these are uh, kind of similar they have uh, two arguments that they take like uh, th there is a difference like in some you will have to provide the full path in some you will provide the binary so some minor differences there among these uh, functions but uh, what they basically do is they usually overlay so they they overlay the duplicate code which was present with a new binary basically so overlay is nothing but uh, replacing a block of code in memory with a new uh, block of code so that is uh, how we run two different type of processes using fork and exec now let's say uh, you wanted to make sure so once the parent creates uh, a child using fork let's say we want so in the so here we saw that there were actually two different uh, uh, possibilities of execution one was that both parent and child will run, would run concurrently which we saw in fork example uh, or we wanted the parent to wait till the child completes now if you want to do this then we would have to make the parent wait till the child completes so there is this wait which we we would have to execute so there is one more system call called wait basically to achieve this so what we'll do is if you consider the same code so let's say uh, we whatever process id we got is greater so like what we'll do is we'll basically call wait here instead of uh, just printing let's call wait so in this case what would happen is let's assume uh, pid fork was called and the pid which uh, it returned was zero so if it is zero then anyway child would execute first but assuming it uh, was 
greater than zero. So that means we are going to run the process, uh, parent process. So in that case, wait will be called. Now what wait will do is wait will uh, actually suspend uh, parent process execution. So parent uh, process execution would be suspended. So once parent is suspended, it will actually again uh, go to the uh, other duplicate process, which would be our child. And it will basically go and uh, call the child process. So here uh, PID four will actually return zero, which would be our child. So in this case, child would be printed. And then if uh, let's say parent was here. So once child uh, like uh, completes its uh, process execution, it terminates, then the control will come back to the parent because it was waiting, then we'll go ahead and continue with the uh, next line of code, which is our parent. So in this case, if you want the parent to wait for the child process to complete and then uh, run its execution, then we'll have to call this wait uh, system call. So there are some things which ha have to be handled, like whenever we call this fork. Now assuming, so parent has called fork. So parent has called fork and uh, this will spawn a child process. So let's say there was this fork called. So there are two processes now, one is your parent, one is your child. Now let's say uh, the control went to child. So what child will do, child will uh, execute, it will run. And then once it completes its execution, uh, it will terminate. Now basically the termination, uh, there will be one more API called, which is the exit API. So child will call its exit and it will terminate. So then uh, the control will basically go back to the parent. Now once the parent, let's say the parent did not call wait. So if, if parent does not call wait, since both these processes are like basically running uh, concurrently. So let's say parent has also started its execution and uh, it has completed its execution, let's say it without calling wait. So it did not call wait. So this was also running, this is also running. So let's say process uh, completed its execution, parent process, and it has actually exited. Let's say it just uh, exit, exited without uh, waiting for the child. Now in this case, what would happen is, so whenever a new process is created, we saw that uh, an entry gets added into the process table. So this process, the parent process, it created a child process. So there was uh, an entry added of the child in the process table, but it did not call wait. So this parent process, it actually proceeded without waiting for the child. Now, usually what happens is once this wait is uh, called, so the process, the parent process would wait for the child. It will take its exit status. So this would return the PID of the child to the parent. It will take this PID of the child go and clear the entry from the process table. Now, since the parent process did not wait for the child and continued execution. So basically whatever exit the child did, uh, it terminated, but its entry would still be present in the process table because uh, that that is the job of the parent process to release. So since parent did not wait for the child and it continued running, this entry in the process table of the child will still be present. So such a process will be called a zombie process. So uh, we shouldn't be having such processes basically. So in order to avoid such zombie processes, what we do is, so this is like, it, this process is dead, but it is kind of like alive because its entry is present in the process table. So in order to avoid this kind of zombie processes, what we have to make sure is that the parent always calls wait. So if parent calls wait, then parent won't uh, continue running until uh, the child executes. So once the child executes and returns its exit status to the parent, it will take its process ID, release it from the process table and then continue running. So this process, uh, the zombie state would still be present because uh, once the child calls exit, so it has terminated. So there is a small transition uh, from this exit to uh, the call going back to the parent. So during the small uh, transition state, the process would stay as zombie, but uh, again, like this is a very short duration. So once the call goes back to the parent, it will release its entry from the uh, process table. So it would be for a very short duration, but if it doesn't call wait and goes uh, running its uh, tasks, then in that case, the zombie will uh, exist. So this is a bad idea. So every time the parent must make sure it calls wait. 
or else zombie processes will get created and uh, if every process keeps on creating child without waiting then we will have multiple entries basically and this process table is like a finite structure so if you keep on having multiple entries then at some point this process table will be full and uh, we won't have uh, i mean we won't be able to uh, create new processes basically so always we'll have to make sure wait is called now this was uh, about process creation basically so uh, just to talk about process termination so one api which uh, we talked about was the wait there is one more api again uh, the exit api so what this will uh, basically do is so once a child process or once a process calls this exit uh, all the resources which were allocated to this process will be deallocated that is one thing and uh, it will return its status to the calling process which is a parent process and also uh, there is a it is also allowed for the parent to terminate its children now why would uh, that happen is because like there might be three reasons for this so whatever child process we created maybe that process is using a lot of uh, resources of the parent so uh, since it's using a lot of resources maybe the other children aren't able to get enough resources so the parent decides to terminate that child that might be one reason the other reason is uh, whatever uh, tasks we wanted the child to do maybe those uh, tasks are no longer needed uh, so in that case also we can maybe get rid of that child and the third would be basically if the parent itself uh, exits so some systems they won't allow the children processes to exi uh, exist if the parent is no longer present so in such a case also it depends on the system so in such a case also the child might uh, be terminated because of the parent termination so in in such systems there is this uh, process uh, called cascading termination so what this will do is let's say there were uh, multiple children and this parent is terminated so in a cascading order all these children will also be terminated so that is what uh, this kind of termination is now again uh, there might be one more uh, case where let's say parent created a child using fork so uh, like once the child is created uh, let's say parent yeah here so in this case the parent ran it called the uh, it was running so both the parent and the child were running so parent did not call wait it continued let's say it did not call this exit so it continued running and uh, the fo uh, the child process called exit so it returned its status but uh, this there was no wait so it wasn't waiting for this exit so only wait will catch the exit status so since there was no wait no, there was no one to catch this exit status so we had zombie now let's say uh, the parent kept on running and then eventually it called exit so in this case there was no wait called and the parent process it terminated so in such a case what would happen is so parent has terminated uh so the parent has terminated and the child is actually child has not called exit let's say uh so child is still running and then eventually it will go and also call exit so parent uh, has terminated but the child is still uh, alive basically so in such a case uh, these kind of children processes will become orphan so these are kind of called the orphan processes now uh, to just understand the difference between zombie and orphan so in both the cases uh, so in the first case wait is not called so since wait is not called by the parent parent doesn't wait for the child child continues and completes its termination so it has uh, called exit in this case so since it has called exit it returns its status to the parent but parent uh, doesn't catch that exit status so the child process is terminated but its entry is present in the process table so this is a zombie it is dead but it's kind of still alive but let's say the child process doesn't call exit and uh, there was no wait also so in such a case like uh, since there is no wait and uh, parent process calls exit let's assume parent process calls exit so in such a case parent will be terminated but uh, child will still be running so in such a case uh, the child process becomes an orphan process yeah so this is it about uh, process creation and termination 
we will basically have uh, uh, maybe a recap just to understand like just to uh, recap what all we went through so first there was the process uh, creation concept we saw that there is something called process table which is a finite structure and uh, it has uh, entries which can be referred through the process id these are unique for every process uh, and a parent process creates a child process using this uh, fork function so this will basically create a duplicate uh, function is what we saw and if you want to make sure the child process doesn't run the same program as the parent we would uh, overlay it with an exec call so this would uh, replace the duplicate uh, function with its with, with a new function basically now uh, there was one more uh, operation called wait which would basically uh, make the parent wait until the child uh, finishes its execution so parent gets suspended here till uh, the child executes and then there was this exit function which will basically deallocate all the resources which were allocated and uh, it will uh, return the exit status to the parent if parent has called wait so parent will be able to catch its exit status through this wait now here we saw that there are two kind of processes which can be created so one is the zombie process and the other one was um, the orphan process so the zombie process would basically terminate so the zombie process will call uh, so the child process will call exit but the parent process doesn't call wait so parent doesn't call wait child calls exit so child terminates but parent uh, so since parent doesn't call wait parent won't release its uh, entry from the process table so child becomes a zombie now here uh, let's say parent parent calls exit so parent here parent calls exit so parent has terminated but the child is still running so here there is no parent so this is called an orphan basically yeah this is it about uh, process creation and termination thank you